This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City, it's the Ramble with me, I'm Alex, and we'll be going until midnight tonight. There he is, Toothless Latrec. <laughs> or Toothless Latrec. What? No kidding. Okay, what happened now? Before you lost all the teeth on the bottom, right? Right, right. And I had a partial up on top. Yeah. And I had the two front teeth. Yeah. Plus some teeth on the side. And on Saturday, I was eating something soft, and I looked down, and there's the tooth in the, in the food. You know something? People don't realize this. It isn't hard food that extracts teeth from your mouth. It's soft right. food. Somebody yeah. once said if you wanted to pull out a loose tooth or something, just eat sourdough French bread. Well, that'll do it. Because it has a suction to it, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. So why did your tooth fall out? Was it just ready to go? I mean, had your dentist predicted this? <clears throat> no. That's what gets me infuriated. I had all this work done, and I thought I was all done, and, and, and I finally got used to the dentures, and I got used to the partial, and then I'm eating, and the tooth just breaks off. It left a root in there. Yeah. Wow. So now I got to go on the fifth and have the root taken out. Well, I have some tooth problems, but uh, I have a tooth that's kind of, it's sensitive, but it doesn't hurt. Right. And it's just sensitive, but doesn't hurt. I don't know what it is. You know, it, it, it cold doesn't bother it, heat, it doesn't bother it, nothing. It's just, it's sensitive. If I bite down on it, sometimes I'll feel it. Other times I don't. So I don't know right. what it is. It could just be something like it needs a good cleaning or something, you know. But, could be. Yeah. But I just hate to go to the dentist. You know why I hate to go to the dentist? It's not sitting there for hours while they do whatever they, whatever they, whatever construction job they're doing at the moment, right? <laughs> uh, because right. Uh, uh, it, it's it's really I'm at this point worried about the cost. You know? Yeah, no kidding, right? Because it used to be you went to the dentist. He was the cheapest person you went to. You, you know. Yeah, you, and they took care of everything. The dentist would pull the teeth. The dentist would fix the teeth. Now you got to go to somebody to, to I got to go to a separate yeah. dentist to get the, the uh, root taken out. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I, um, uh, my dentist does everything now. But I had a dentist who didn't do anything. I mean, if I needed a right. root canal, she sent me to the antidontist. And right. if I needed something else, she sent me somewhere. If I need an implant, she sent me to the implant doctor. My doctor right. does it all. My oh, new really? Dentist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll pull it, put in the implant, do whatever, you know. But I have like three implants in my mouth, and I thought about it, and that's about $15,000 worth of work right there. Wow. You know? Wow. Wow. Wow, that's so, too much. So nothing's cheap anymore, you know. I mean, you do have, we do have some kind of insurance, but it doesn't take care of this. This is the thing that I have been yelling about for years. We always talk about universal health care, right? Mm -hmm. We should all have universal right. health care. No single right. payer, right? Blah, 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 blah. What about dental? What about dental? I, look at they, you. They view that as secondary. Here's why I feel dental is important. Number one, it does affect your health. Okay. Oh, yeah. It does affect your health. And secondly, uh, uh, just look at me. It's just smile with that tooth, okay? All right. And now you're applying for a job. Right. Right. Who's going to hire you with that tooth missing? Right. If you can't, well, if, if that's why we should take care of dental, that it's, 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 uh, it's far too much. It costs far too much, and m most people can't afford it. It's out of the reach of most people. I'm lucky. I have enough money I can get implants. Okay. Right. I don't like to pay for them because, you know, the maybe the, the insurance pays for 1500 bucks, and I got to pay the rest. All right? Right. But I have it. 
okay and I'll do it if it's this tooth it looks it'll show people notice it if I smile too much so I, I want to put an implant in there it's way in the back it was my last tooth fuck it right you know uh, but all I'm saying is we need universal dental care because it's very important it's part of our health right no it should go hand in hand with medical yeah yeah uh, but we don't we don't take care of that so no we don't you know uh, and I think the reason we don't take care of it is we go back to the 50s when I say when I go in for to fill a cavity or something it was like ten dollars a surface that's how they did it may I walk out of there with a new filling and it cost me 20 bucks which, right. you know, granted, 1950 was a lot more than it is now, but it still was a lot cheaper than it is now. Because if I get a tooth filled, it's about 300 bucks, 350, something like that. You know, is that right? Sure. And we, it, you know, it it should be taken care of. It should, right. It, especially, you know, Marjorie was mentioning something. She said, you know, for seniors, they should do everything for seniors. To begin with, right? I agree. To begin with, when it's tax time, we shouldn't have to pay taxes. Over we shouldn't certain, even have to file. Yeah, over a certain age, we shouldn't have to pay taxes. Right. Hell, my union after a certain age, I don't have to pay dues. You know. Is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah uh, with after, I don't think after sixty-five, maybe seventy-five, you're considered a senior performer, and they don't charge you for your dues. I'll have to find out about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're still a member of the union, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you should find out about it. Uh, yeah, I should. Because right now I'm paying dues for nothing. Well, you're paying dues for nothing, yeah. Yeah, well, I paid dues for years, even when I wasn't doing any union work. Right. Because I I, I, I believed in the union. I believed Yeah, me in, too. And so I wanted to support it. My support was I always was very proud of being a member until recently when they did this whole thing about fucking up our uh, health uh, insurance, health insurance. And then I just, wow, I just went, eh, you right. Know, they're pretty terrible, you know, but, uh, but anyway, so I, and every time I see a performer, they go like, you know, such and such an actor just hit 102 years old and you go, oh, that's wonderful probably doesn't have any health insurance because of our goddamn union. Right, you know? right. So, uh, it, they, I mean, the plan we used to have was like about $2,000 a year, and it was a supplement to our, our, our Medicare, and it was pretty damn good. I mean, it got me through my cancer thing, and I maybe had to put out a couple of hundred bucks here and there. Right. You know, but uh, it was terrific, and the dental was $2,500 a year. You know, and it was all within that two thousand for both Marjorie and I, right? And if we had children, it would cover them too for that two thousand. Right. So I mean, they they stopped covering us, and 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 we're of course there's a big legal action against the union for what they did, but nevertheless, you know, uh, we're back to paying like three. We well, Marjorie's company is paying for it for the next two years. Uh, right. B b Tell me that we're paying between us. Uh, about uh, six hundred dollars a month for wow. your supplemental insurance. Right. It shouldn't be. Right. Hey, and then you still got to pay copays and whatnot. Hey, old friend, you're eighty-two years old. Don't worry about a thing. Your government's taking care of you. Yeah. Huh? Right. Huh? It should be. It should be over over seventy-five, over seventy, something like that. You know. Hey, no more taxes, and we'll take care of you. Okay. Right. You've been paying in all these years. You've been paying those big amounts of money. Forget it. You know. Right. Uh, you you've done your share, and I have. Yes. I've done my share. I paid my fair share, probably more than you did. You know. At one point, I was probably. Making, I was making so much money that my tax bill was pretty large every year. You know. So I mean, I paid. You know, but here I am. I'm they, I'm left out to dry by the government. So, and you should. So what are you gonna do? You shouldn't have to worry about that tooth. That tooth should be taken care of. You know. Hopefully it is. Yeah. So far, all the work has been taken care of. Yeah, yeah, but you know. It, it, nevertheless, because you have the the uh, advantage insurance as your right. supplement, 
it's not taking care of everything because it probably doesn't cover implants. No, which, no, that's why I had to get dentures. Yeah, where if you had implants right now, they put in like for you two implants. Right, right? two or three. Two or three, and then they put in the denture. And it right. would be in there permanently, be like your, right. I mean, I don't know that, I know that I know which teeth of mine are the implants, but quite frankly, I wouldn't know if I didn't pay attention. You know? Right, right. So, I mean, that should be what they do. You shouldn't have to have dentures. Dentures is the right. old technology. And you can still do the implants if you want to, you know, at some point. Right. When you, when you get that thousand million dollar contract with Warner Brothers. Right, for right, the, sure. For the next Batman movie or something. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And they'll probably make another Batman movie. What? I'm sure they'll make another Batman movie. Well, uh, the latest Batman movie I actually liked a lot. I didn't see it. Yeah, Marjorie doesn't like it, but uh, didn't like the last third of it. I I happened to like it. I thought it was really terrific. It's more getting back to Batman as the world's greatest detective. Oh, okay. You know? And there's there's not a lot of action in this film. There's a lot of talking. There's a lot of, you know, hey, this leads you to that, leads you to that, leads you to that. You know, it's a puzzle box. Okay. And uh, it, it's very good. It's it, They've done away with a lot of the, you know, there's a, he for a short time in this film, he's got the Batmobile. And, that's, and it's just a, another car that's just all revved up. Right, you right. Know. It's all souped up. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and he falls in love with Catwoman, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, which happened in the comics, I understand. They had a kid together in the comics. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, but I like the new one. But they'll keep making Batman because, uh, but the trouble is they keep making it in different forms, you know, and it, it changes every time. The tone of it really changes. And Christopher Nolan did pretty good with the three Batman pictures that he did. But then they went on with, uh, what's his name, uh, Matt Damon's friend, um, you know, the guy. Oh. Who, huh? Oh, what, what, what's his name? Yeah, it's, oh, what's his name? That's how much I care about him as an actor. But right. he, he was terrible as Batman. And the whole, the whole suit got so overdone and everything, you know, and this picture just kind of strips all that away. And, okay. And and goes back to the basically the 1930s Batman. Oh, uh, really? In in present day, but the 1930s style Batman from the comic book. Right. Right. Being, like you said, he's more of a detective. More of a detective. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is what he was in the beginning. Right. And the thing I always liked about Batman was is he was just like you and I. He just worked out a lot. Right. You know? Right. And he had billions of dollars. Mm hmm. Yeah. And he could get all those cool gadgets. You know? Right, right, right. He could have them made up. But you went from the Michael Keaton Batman to the then the Batman with uh, the Christopher Nolan did to the uh, Batman that Ben Affleck did. Okay. Oh, he's horrible. He's horrible. And horrible. You know, and so they keep doing them over and over and over again. And in between on television, there was the Gotham show with Batman as a young boy. It's the young Bruce Wayne and the whole. Oh, other really? Way. What channel was that on? That was uh, that was um, uh, Fox. It was on for five. It was on for five seasons. I didn't see it at all. Great show, really good show. Uh, it, it, it. I know they did a Batwoman on Fox. Well, no, CW. CW did Bat Batwoman. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's still on. Uh, but you know, I I I just feel that. Uh, uh, you know, they should get all their bats together. You know, the, and, but this get late, all their bats in a row. This latest one, I think, did a really good job of it. The only well, that's to deal with the comic book, Alex. They can just reboot it any way they want. Yeah, but the thing I like best, uh, uh, worst about the hated worst about this movie was all these movies feel they have to end with some big deal. You know, some last big blowout scene with. All the effects and the the, the 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 you know fighting something and trying to pers. Right. It's, it, 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 Who's the villain, Alex? Who's the villain the, in the Batman? The, the villain in this one is Riddler. Riddler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Not Jim Carrey's Riddler. And what's interesting is they have Penguin, but he's played by Colin Farrell, 
who is absolutely unrecognizable. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The makeup is that good. He's unrecognizable. Right, 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 right. And he does a Brooklyn accent instead of the Irish accent he was born with. And, I mean, it. I just think it's a very good movie. You know, it's a very good movie. I'll have to see it. And the bad one of the bad guys is John Turturro. You know, is a very good actor. They uh, they pulled out the stops on this one. I thought it was really good. I thought uh, oh cool and, and very dark. You know, it's always raining and nighttime and right, right, you know. right, and gloomy. Well, in most of these movies, the sun never rises on Gotham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, right. You know something? I, I, what you should do with that tooth right now, and while you got the chance, is quick. Learn to play the banjo. Yeah, no shit, right? Uh, yeah, and then go, uh, you look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pretty face. You, know? you got a pretty mouth. Yeah. But, uh, so I could ask, what are you doing? But the thing is, you're probably spending most of your time with the dentist. Right. Yeah. That's kind of my, my whole life. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for five months now. Yeah. Well, you know what happened? Also, one other thing they've done away with, I used to love going to the dentist. Why did I love going to the dentist? Because the first thing you'd do is put a mask on my face and juice me up with the gas. Oh, right. You know? Right. And there was a point at which dentists, every dentist was using gas because people right. would come to them just for the gas. So I knew when I went to the dentist, yeah, he'd have to do a root canal or whatever, or he'd have to boo whatever he had to do. But uh, uh, I, he just gave me the gas, and he could pull every tooth out of my mouth, and I wouldn't care. Yeah, but the gas kind of made me sick. Well, if they turn it up too much, it'll make yeah. you sick. If they do it just right, and I always tell them, turn it down, turn it down. I don't want it. It's too high. You know, it's right. it's, uh, it's making me uncomfortable. And they turn it down, you know. And right, I felt like I was flipping over backwards in the chair. Yeah, but now I go to a dentist and I go, well, you give me gas? And they go, well, we don't believe in it, but it'll be 150 bucks if you want it. Right, 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 right. Now it's Novocaine. I had my tooth pulled at one point and they, they charged me 150 bucks for the gas. I said, I want the gas. You know, it's just gonna make me feel better if you, right. do, if you do the gas. And uh, they don't do gas anymore. In the no. old days, I, I had a dentist. They didn't even charge. They didn't even charge you for the gas. Right. Because right. It's, I had that. It's that cheap. It's not like this very expensive uh, thing. And um, I would go to my dentist. The first dentist I ever went to, they gave me gas. Said, "Do you want some gas? Want me to get you high?" I go, "Yeah, here." And he put the gas on me. And then he went to work on my teeth. And I went, "Right." This is fine. This is a good reason to go to the dentist. Right, right, you right. Know? But right. all of a sudden, they don't do it anymore, and you're back to just the Novocaine. And what's terrible about it is, is that what the what the gas did was it compressed time, so that okay, you, you know what I'm saying. In other words, yes, you, I do know you, what you're you, saying. You were fully awake, but somehow time was kind of compressed, and before you knew it, he was through. Right. You, were, you weren't out or anything, but it was right. just, it just, it distorted. And once time. they shut it off, it was off. It, once they shut it off, you weren't high anymore. You, they just gradually added oxygen until you right. came right Where, Whereas the Novocaine, you, you know, you can't fill your lip for the next couple of hours. Oh, right, or years or whatever, you know. Right. Uh, but, I mean, uh, I think if they did more gas, more people would go to the dentist. And just free. What? It doesn't cost much. You know, no. how much gas am I going to use? About five cents worth. Right. You know, so stop it already. You know, but that that was a that was a turning point where you just can't get gas anymore. Or we don't believe in that. It's not good for the brain cells. Hey, I'm 82. My brain cells are going anyway. Come on. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Make the ones I got left happy. Yes. You please. Know? Exactly. So, I mean, I just never, I never, to tell you the damn truth, I never understood the, the, why, they, why they suddenly decided gas was not a good idea. Well, I never understood why anybody would want to be a dentist. Well, that's the other thing I've talked about, is that, you know, all dentistry is, okay? And if you're a dentist out there listening to me right now, I'm sorry if you're bothered by this, but it's the truth. All dentists are, are carpenters. 
they're basically in carpentry and construction. And yeah, okay. you know, it's like with doctors, they go, he's got this pain in his side. What could it be? Let's go through this. Is, they, they're, you know, doctors are surgeons, uh, not surgeons, but are detectives. Right, you know, they, I was gonna say that. Yeah, they're detectives. So, so there's something to stimulate their mind. Oh, what's wrong with my patient? Oh, we, we gotta right. find out. Let's do an MRI, let's find out with this and that. With a dentist, it's, oh, he's got a cavity. Okay, we're gonna drill. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing they do that is uh, a detective work. You know, a cavity is a cavity. A pain in the tooth is a pain in the tooth. Right. You know. Right. Tooth needs removal. You extract it. It's the right. most boring profession you can think of, outside of maybe being a, an accountant. You know, I mean, it's oh, really, God. it's really boring. And there's a high suicide rate among dentists. Yes. You know, I wonder why that is. Because it's so boring. I mean, you're doing the same thing. I mean, Marjorie went in to see her dentist today, and it's no big deal. She she had to do this. She had to put a crown in there. She had to do this. You know, it, it, there's never anything like, well, we have to we have to send you to another doctor to find out what this what's wrong with this. You know, right? I mean, when I came down with my cancer, he went through a. A, a process of elimination to find out if I had cancer or not. When I did, he sent me to an oncologist, and they, as my doctor, they took care of it. As my doctor said it in a note to me. They fried my prostate, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they fried my prostate, and uh, uh, but but it got taken care of. But it was a whole whole process of elimination and detective work, and you know. So it's right. much more interesting for 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 a doctor than it is for a dentist. I, I think you blow. I blow my brains out being a dentist. Well, also dentists are hated, where doctors are respected. Well, dentists are hated because they're perceived of as inflicting pain. Right. And the fact is, they really don't. Once you got the novocaine in you, which is just a mild prick in your mouth. Right. Have you ever had a prick in your mouth? A uh, <laughs> uh, mild prick in your mouth, uh, you know, no, nothing hurts. I think what it is, it's annoying. Right. See, what's annoying about it is not, it's that you're there with your mouth open for an hour. Sometimes they put a little wedge in my mouth to keep it open. Right, right, to keep it open. Yeah, because, uh, and you just, uh, I can't, yeah, and then you got the drill. It, and the drill, right. drill's going, Meh, and then you can hear it slow down when it hits like rock bottom. Meh, oh God! You know, and and all of that is the reason why they should be giving people gas. I mean, I have one dentist who said he loved people on gas because they were very pliable. Open your mouth wider. You know, right. you just did right. it. And he said it was easier to work on people who are on uh, or high on gas than uh, who aren't. So he liked to work with uh, people on gas. First thing hmm. he'd do when they came in, and they had to have some work done, slap that mask on your face. Right, you know? right. And it doesn't impede anything he has to do, you know, because they're they're made so they, you know, they go up the sides and you, uh, you know, it's just the mask here. Just covers your nose. Yeah, it doesn't affect the mouth. They do right. all the work they want to do. Why they don't do it, I have no idea. Be easier for them. I'd be I don't a, know. I'd be a better patient. Right, you know? right. And, and because it compresses time, you don't know when an hour has gone by. No. You know, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, whatever. So, so anyway, so your mouth will have to, we'll get your mouth in shape eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Is they gonna have to put another bridge up there, or what do they put in there? Just a, they're gonna put another tooth in there. Oh, they put another tooth in there. Well, they're, right. They're, once they once they get the root out, once they take the root out, then they gotta wait three weeks for it to heal, and then they'll put another tooth on the partial. On the partial. Right. The part you have partials up in the top. Right. Oh, okay. So then they bridge it across the two of them, right? Right. Yes, that's what they do. Okay. Well. Uh, it's a bridge is what they're going to give you. Right. Okay, so that's permanent. That's not 
you know, that's not like uh, dentures that you take off and throw them. Right. Throw them the right. glass at night. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I just looked, and uh, we're coming up on our time running out here. It's always oh, a, is that right? It's always a pleasure to talk to you, my dear friend. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Alex. It's always just a nice piece of intelligent conversation with a man we know of as Stephen Kravitz. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye. Bye, folks. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, all righty. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, are we ready to go for another night of fun and games or phoning games? <laughs> well, we're not really phoning in. You know, this is like Zoom. If you don't know how to get on the program, by the way, it's very simple. Very simple. You go over to gabnet.net. There's the little thing on the right hand side of the page with the big letter Zoom. You click on that and it'll immediately take you here. It's that simple. Uh, there's only one person, wait, oh, well, now it's two people, but uh, it was one person. And the one person was this gentleman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, who uh, we love seeing here. Uh, let me see here, and then we'll admit uh, Jeff Stein as well, okay, so that uh, we, uh, we have Jeff. Uh, hi, Jeff. Move your camera a little bit so we can see your whole face. Kilroy was here. Yep. Yeah. How are you? Remember Kilroy was here? Remember that old thing? They were all over the country. Yeah. People would draw this little thing with a guy with his hands over what seemed to be a, a ledge and then his nose. And that was it. And that's what a lot of people look like when they're on, uh, on Zoom. So I just thought I would mention that. Uh, how many are dead today, uh, Oh, it was a, not too bad. It's only 492 dead Americans but today. But you know something? I'll tell you, we're really working our way towards uh, towards uh, uh, that uh, one million mark. And, yeah. and, and you know, everything about us, what's wrong? Oh, there we go. Okay, we froze up for a second. Uh, uh, everything that, um, uh, the, the, that we have in us in America is this desire to be number one. You know, we're number one, we're number one. And we can really get to that million death mark, folks, if, you'll, if the Republicans will only help us out. Because they're the ones that are refusing to wear masks. And uh, I think if they would all stop wearing their masks and breathing in each other's faces, we can make that one million, okay? So don't <laughs> let us down, Republicans. <laughs> Meanwhile, us wokes uh, are more than happy to uh, not get it. Are they? Are we idiots or what? When it comes to this, God yep. damn it! I just, yes. it, 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 yeah. I mean, if it, it just, it just drives me nuts when I see these people going. <coughs> well, it's my right not to have to wear a mask. That's not the point. It's your responsibility to wear a mask. You know, it's your, it's your, it's your American duty to wear it. It's not that you are. You, you have a right to not wear a mask. Yeah, you have a right not to wear a mask. You also have the right for everybody around you to go, look at that fucker, he's not wearing a mask. Let me ask you this, Charlie. Let me ask you this, Jeff, since you're the only two people I can ask, obviously. Okay. Um, will you still wear a mask in certain situations? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. See? So, I mean, we'll wear the mask. We'll be the last three people left on the face of the earth alive, okay? And, yeah. And, and we'll be just fine with it, folks. We'll be just fine with it, okay? Here comes Alan, okay? Here's Alan. Well, now we're we're up to three people. Yeah. I agree. I, I heard you talking about wearing a mask. It, I think it's selfish to not wear a mask. Well, no, I mean, it's a patriotic duty. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, if you care about your fellow Americans and you want America to be well. You now, know. I, I, I don't really see a downside to wearing a mask and the upside's obvious. Yeah. yeah. Did you, so. uh, you, you know, I mean, it is just, I just, I, I just don't understand it. You know, I really don't understand it. Uh, and uh, everything, you know, I'm surprised there's anybody left alive in Florida. Yeah. I mean, you know, they... Uh, what? 
DeSantis got his way. He signed the uh, Disney thing. They're no longer a entity of their own. So what is that going to do for Florida? They estimate $15 billion that they are going to have to raise in in taxes in Florida for all the uh, you know all the residents everybody's, everybody's property tax or whatever tax <clears throat> yep. whatever tax they yep. can tax in Florida yep. is going to go up 25% probably so because Disney isn't doesn't have to take care of its own police department anymore and its own fire Yeah, they got to yeah. hire now they got to figure out how to make a city out of this 40 square miles police fire yeah. uh medical street cleaning sewers all that stuff what an idiot yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, that's a cost Disney doesn't have to bear. No, no, you know? maybe prices will go down. But, you know, I still think, and I read something today, that there is a possibility they may say they're going to leave Florida. Yeah, you know? I hope yeah. they do. I hope they do, too. Well, I think they sh I think they at least should threaten it. If they just threaten it, they'll buckle, you know? Yep. Uh, well, I we don't need right. them here. What? You've got a Universal Studios? Yeah, I'm not so sure. You know? Yeah, I heard today they have 77,000 jobs for Disney World. 77,000? Yeah. Yep. So that all those people would leave to Colorado or wherever the heck they move Disney World. They'll yeah. move there instead. Well, that would be a killer. I don't know if they could really do Disney World anywhere else unless they could find a large enough parcel of land that is just not being used and the, take texas it, nobody cares about that well we don't want to do it in texas because they'll be assholes about it too but yeah you know uh i just think that uh i mean they have enough disney properties around the world that they can survive okay absolutely you know absolutely. uh and the movie end of it too well movies. yeah movies and uh their 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 disney plus is doing very well for them and you know <laughs> Uh, and the question is that, yes, you could say, yes, we'll lose money by closing down Disney World, but how much money will you not be spending when you close down Disney World? I mean, that's a very expensive operation. Absolutely. And, and, and especially during COVID, I'm sure they were running at a loss. You know? They, 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 they pay 750 uh Something like seven. And, and you know what the whole thing is? The whole problem is it's DeSantis's ego. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. all it is. <laughs> yep. How dare you go against my edict? Yep. You know? Yeah, well, you're an asshole. That's why we went against your edict. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean uh, people, huh? People have Netflix here. Well, I have Netflix, yeah. I, I just got it last night. Dollar ninety nine a month on special. Dollar ninety nine a month for how I've long? I've never had it before, but I knew I couldn't pass up the deal. My roommate for how long? Uh, how long? Guaranteed for a year. Dollar oh. ninety nine. I think I'll quit it and join up again. That's right. You know, yeah. or I'll have my wife join. Better yeah. yet, you know. What are you paying? I don't, I don't know what the regular I'm price paying is. Paying almost twenty dollars a month. Wow. Well, you see, to yeah, begin I with, twenty four for both the streaming and the DVDs. Yeah, well, I don't have the DVDs thing, but the the streaming. Yeah, this was I've just got the crazy. I've got the 4K, you know, four K, yeah, four K, signal, okay, which you pay extra for at Netflix. Nobody else does that, but Netflix does. And I get like four people that can use the Netflix at the same time. All right. Yeah. Uh, now they're yelling and screaming. They want to stop me from like turning my password over to somebody else so they can use it too my answer to them is listen assholes i'm paying for four people i'm not paying for two i could get it for less if i only take two uh i i should if screw you i should you should kiss my ass and be glad that i'm paying that much money every month but here's what i'm doing i'm gonna i'm working on cutting the cord i have a little trepidation about it but i'm gonna do it we may be off the air for a couple of nights while I try and get this whole re thing rejiggered so that we can just use the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the uh, internet uh, feature that I have, which is, you know, a gigabyte up and a gigabyte down. But here's the deal. Uh, I got my latest bill from Fios. When I first joined Fios, here's the ripoff that's Fios. 
my Fios bill was $225 a month. Now, mind you, I have five boxes in this apartment, uh, mm -hmm. and I subscribe to all the services. All right? So that's how it got to be $225. Mine's, mine's 180 and I have five boxes, but none of the services. I have Comcast, cable, it's yeah. internet, yeah. Um, a phone, and... Uh, and, and uh, yeah, well, whatever. Television. Continue, yeah. continue, Alex. Continue. Well, well, anyway, yes, let me continue. Sorry. Uh, uh, and and uh, so I get a bill from them uh, this month, and it's $296 for the month. And it keeps been going up and down lately. And it says that there was some kind of, like, service fee they had to adapt and blah, 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 blah. And it's for sports channels. What am I paying for fucking sports channels for? But I supposedly, if you subscribe, you have to pay for the sports channels. I Tom don't Cat give a crap. I, I don't give a crap about those sports channels. Nope, me either. You know, and what we were arguing a couple of years back is that these cable companies are for, do you know that, for instance, what do you think is every channel that you have on is being paid something by the cable company to carry it. Some others, maybe not. They, they give it to them for nothing because they just want to get the cable carriage. But who, what do you think? What channel do you think costs more and is take, you're paying for more than any other channel? Hey, Charlie knows the answer to this one, yeah. don't you? Ready? Life Re Re channel. Lifetime. Really? Most of the uh, most of the cable companies pay them something like nine dollars a month yeah. per customer. Per prescriber? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And my question is, how many here have watched Lifetime lately? I make my case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I don't watch sports, but yet, yeah, they that last year they put a twelve dollar ninety nine cent fee yeah. for sports. Yeah. On my, I mean. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want sports. I'm sorry. If other yeah. people want sports, let them goddamn pay for it. Yeah. Okay. You know, don't force me to pay for it just because I subscribe. You know, that was, uh, that fee was, uh, I think, $7 a month. $8 a month. But I finally decided I'm going to, I'm going to cut the cord. I'm saying goodbye, <laughs> you know. And yep. I'm going to call up Fios and I'm going to say, I'm going to cut the cord. Can you give me any kind of a deal where I'm getting exactly what I'm getting now? For yes, less? they will. They'll give you like half price and yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow, that would be nice. You know. Topcast usually is willing to knock off $20 a month for a year. Uh, they, they try to give me half price for six months. Oh, well, that's nice. Half then. price for six months. Oh, I want, I want, I want it to go back down to $225 forever. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I won't. You know, it'd be a lot less trouble for me to not cut the cord, but I will, because then I have to return all the boxes and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, but as you know, I, if I, I added it all up, I'm already paying for like Netflix, Hulu, Disney, ESPN Plus, which is a package of its own. I'm paying for Paramount Plus. I'm paying for Apple TV Plus. That's about a six dollars a month, at that, on top of my cable bill. Yeah. Wow! With all those plus what I'm going to have to pay for in like HBO Max and Showtime and all the ones that I get now as part of my package, I'm still going to come out paying less than I'm paying now. So why shouldn't I? Uh, my know? my, I just looked. It was through Comcast. The one ninety nine a month. I yeah, get the receipt. So yeah, but what do you get for it? You don't get the high def. You don't get the 4K, rather. I don't get 4K, but I don't have. And any you 4K. and you don't. You only get, I think, two people that can watch it at the same time. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I don't get the DVDs. I just get streaming. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know. But for what do you want for two dollars a month? You know. Well, I mean, apparently <laughs> they apparently they want to. You know, do that. I'm, I should. I should just uh, uh, quit Netflix and then have Marjorie re-sign up for it or something at a cheaper price or something. Who knows? You know. I don't know. I I, I think I can have two people. I don't know. I, I, I think you get two people. 
Yeah, I didn't look at that. I just, but if I do have two people, yeah. you can have my other thing. Uh, I don't care. Uh, uh, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, speaking of Paramount Plus, that have you <clears throat> have you seen the ads for that that Godfather, the offer? I guess it's like how it's supposed to be how they made the movie and the storylines behind it's it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a. Yeah, that's the most intelligent thing anybody said on this program in months. I tell you, she's still on the sugar high from the trip. I like your Facebook thing, you trying to be stealth and her dancing in the background. That's cute, the little video you posted. But the uh, yeah, the offer it looks pretty good. Uh, I know there's a lot of storylines behind the movie, so I don't know if it's supposed to be true or if they're just gonna do like a lot of these things to just sort of make up stories. That's very how good. They, That's very good. They, she covers her face when she coughs. Very good. Yeah, very good. How the, the three, the three, what, uh, Godfather one, two, and three, Brian? No, no, it's a it's a series that they did a drama series. Okay. Of the creation and the production of The Godfather. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it starts, when does it start? Do you remember? I don't know. It's on Paramount Plus. So there you go. I want to see it really bad if it's good. And then I don't have Paramount Plus. So when we're going to I got paid? Paramount Plus and I got it at half price for the first year. So I was paying, without commercials, I was paying like two, four and a half dollars a month. Mm. So now, oh. they, now they've raised it up to the regular price. But I'm willing to pay it because I found I watch Paramount Plus a lot. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I if I mean the nerve of FiOS getting me up to like two hundred and you know ninety five dollars a month. I mean, I went to them because I was sick of uh, Time Warner at the point at that time charging me uh, 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 like three hundred and fifty dollars a month for cable. You know, so I just I said to them, I'm, "Goodbye, I'll see you later," and I went over to uh, to Fios. You know? I remember you used to talk about that on the show before I was on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it 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 all these cable companies. You know, it's kind of like they're uh, they 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 keep raising the prices, and I think that Netflix. I think mean, Netflix is moaning that they lost uh, two hundred thousand subscribers in the last quarter. And they're saying it's because people like me let somebody else, like a friend of ours, use my password, okay? And I'm going, well, to begin with, I'm paying you $20 a month. You can blow me, all right? But they also said <clears throat> HBO Max gained customers, right? Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, they're complaining that that's the reason that they, they lost. You know, so they're gonna clamp down on that. I got news for them. The reason they lost People. Number one, they lost seven hundred thousand because they turned off all the service in Russia. Okay, that's for ah. starters. All right, that's uh, on their national. The other thing they did was they raised their rates two dollars. Yep. How many people just said that's it? I'm through. You know, it was okay when mm -hmm. I could pay you know twelve ninety five or nine ninety five or whatever, but now they got me up two more dollars. That's it. That, they, they finally hit the point at which there was pain, you know? And, and quite frankly, I mean, for years, I paid four ninety five dollars uh, fourteen ninety five dollars a month to, to uh, um, uh, HBO, and now I get HBO Max as part of my package, you know, for, which would be fourteen ninety five on its own. But I always considered HBO Max to be worth it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, I I I was very happy with it. Um, you know, and plus a HBO. You know, there's a difference in quality between Netflix and HBO, in the in the productions that they do. Yep. Uh, the uh, a a HBO seems to always just have a little bit better production values on everything. Whereas Netflix will take anything that moves and slap on the Netflix original name on it, you know? I mean, I can't tell you how many shows I've watched that I've gotten from Britain and things like that, you know, that I've watched using uh, torrents and things like that, that have gone to HBO, uh, excuse me, gone to Netflix, and all of a sudden, they're a Netflix original? 
They weren't when they were on in England. You know, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I think they have Peaky Blinders as a as a Netflix original, and it's not. Never has been. You know. So anyway, so I'm thinking of cutting cutting the cord. You know, and screw them. Heard you talking about that, Alex. Uh, we did that two years ago. Mm -hmm. We saw our. Um, uh, the only thing we kept with FiOS was the uh, uh, was the computer stuff, you know. Was the internet? Was the yeah, internet. internet? Yeah. And uh, we went from spending two hundred and seventy five, two hundred and eighty five dollars a month down to I think it's now about seventy five, maybe eighty, eighty two. Something but we're like gonna that. go with maybe Hulu Plus Live. Which is, by the way, which for 75 bucks, you also get all three of Disney's services, Hulu, uh, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus, all within that price. But you also get all your local channels, you get all, all the major uh, cable channels, and, uh, you know, that's, that's just for starters. And then I'm gonna have to pay like about 100 bucks a month for the internet. I could do it for less. I could just get their, you know, lesser speeds. But I, I want it so that for this it that all you know works well, and then uh, then I just add on all the other services individually, you know. And I tell you, uh, I know you're an, like me. You're an old movie buff. No. You got so many. No. Fighter. You're not an old buff. No. Oh damn! No. I thought all the time you and I shared that love. No, no, I mean, I, you know, I like movies, you know, and I have a good, uh, good uh, idea about the history of them and so on and so forth. We but, shall have that trivia playoff one yeah, day. Yeah, well, you know, prepare to have your ass wiped. Hey, I've had my ass wiped by better people than you. Well, I guess so. Or rimmed, at least, <laughs> you know. But, uh, when I get through with the intersection, you know what I do? I go in and I watch at least two episodes of some 1930s or 40s serial because... I love Lucy. No, not I love Lucy. I love you. talking about serials like, you know, Flash Gordon or Buck yeah, Rogers. Flash, yeah. or... He doesn't know anything about that young whippersnapper. Take that boy out and whip him. Yeah. But uh, uh, right now, uh, I am watching radar men from the moon for the umpteenth time mm -hmm. i'm trying to remember was uh, that's that's uh, commando cody right well there were three different guys no but i mean, but I mean the, ca the character was basically commando on cody Com commando cody yeah and i i think it was radar men on the moon that leonard des moines was in mm, you know he might be he, it, if he is he's got a very small well he part. plays he plays a uh, an alien well, now that's another one. He was typecast from the very beginning. I think it was the first or second thing he did. He got typecast. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, you know, I mean, but I, uh, uh, you know, I just, I just, I'm just tired of paying this kind of money for, mm -hmm. you know, for, and, and what am I getting? You know, I mean, to begin with, you're forced to take all these. Uh, I've got 300, 400 channels. That's yeah. wonderful. I only watch two or three of them. You know, yeah. why should I just have to pay for the two or three that I do watch? And when you're uh, with streaming, so many of those, surprisingly enough, are free if you put up with the commercials. Yeah. You you know who I'm paying, actually paying 11 bucks a month to? I finally decided to. I get, have, get it. I get YouTube Premium. Mm -hmm. and Because I watch so much YouTube that I don't want to have to put up with the commercials. Okay. Yeah, because not only they run the commercials, but sometimes in the middle of something they run a commercial, yeah. you know. And so I just said to the hell with it. So I'm, I'm paying them, and I'm happy to pay them. And I get they get some extras you get, but I don't know what they are. But anyway, I really uh, uh, I I I go into the bedroom late at night. I turn on YouTube, and before I know it, it's four o'clock in the morning because I kept going from one thing to another to another to another. It's addictive, you know. Also, there is a. Uh one streaming channel that is old classic uh radio programs 
I've got all, uh, for the first time in my life, I have almost all of the Lone Ranger radio programs and the Green Hornet. And what are you going to do with them now that you've got them? I listen to them. You, you want to spend every single night of your life listening to every episode of the Lone Ranger. It brings back wonderful memories. For me. <laughs> brings back memories of turning in the super heterodyne radio from my grandma. I had on my show in New York, I had uh, Fred Foy came on the show along with uh, the guy. I'm trying to remember his name because he was my boss at, at ABC in New York. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. But he well, was the Fred Foy. He, Fred Foy was. Because well, uh, they don't know. I, I was going to say. Just let me finish the story first. <laughs> and this guy was the voice on the Green Hornet. Hmm. And the, I had them on together with each other. And they both worked at WXYZ in Detroit, where Fran Stryker created both shows. Now, you do know that the two shows are related. Yes. Because why? Well, you said they were created by... No, by no. Why are they related? Why are they related? Well, they, I don't know. Now that I think about it. Well, let me give you the history. Are you, are you guys ready for this? This may bore the crap out of you. Out of hell with them. But, uh, but you do know this because you've all seen the Lone Ranger, right, people? Yeah. And you've all seen the Green Hornet, yes. right, people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the name of the Lone Ranger's real name was John Reed. John Reed. Yeah. He had a um, ki he had a uh, nephew. By the name of Brit Reed. Brit Reed. Okay. Now let's go over to the uh, the Green Hornet. Uh, oh, that's right. The gr now the Green, the Green Hornet's Hornet. last name was what? Reed. Mm -hmm. And who was his father? Brit Reed. Brit Reed. Oh. Exactly. Uh, he is the Green Hornet. Is the Lone Ranger's great grand nephew. That's right. And uh, to even make it a little more interesting, when they did the radio shows, they told me, they would take a Lone Ranger episode. Yes. And then they would change the script to the Green Hornet. Uh, and you had Cato yeah. and Tonto, right? You I, had Black Beauty, which was the Green Hornet's car, and Silver, the horse, yes. right? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and they simply would just transpose them. And use the same exact scripts. Now, now tell me if this was true. I I heard or read somewhere that when Fran Stryker was uh, doing all this at WXYZ, someone working with him ran a broadcast school, and they had some of the students writing scripts. I have no idea about that. Right. But anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Most people don't even know what we're talking about. Look, Charlie's getting bored already. I didn't listen to that. Oh, hmm? Yeah, yesterday you jinxed the you jinxed the garlic festival. I jinxed the garlic festival. Why yeah. was that? When you were talking about it, they just canceled it. Why? Well, Indefinitely. No. Nope. They said uh, they ran out of garlic. What? No, the shooting the shooting that they had 2019. They said the the pandemic, and they just said they couldn't recover after that. So there's a shortage on bullets right now. What do you so, mean? Yeah, they're they're, they're uh, canceling it, and they say indefinitely. They said there, there's a couple small things yeah. that they're going to continue on. They they had like a, some small events, but the garlic festival. Here Sorry. comes here comes Kevin. He's yeah. down there in that part of the world. Uh, we're, we're we're talking Kevin about the cancellation of the garlic festival. Yeah, that's what I heard. Does this mean we're going to have to pay extra to have garlic on our breath? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could be. I think it's a big stink with the, the big stink, uh, the big stink. with uh, the Fresno one. I have a feeling. What do you I mean? I don't know that for is sure. Is there a Fresno garlic festival? They started one, I want to say, a few years ago. By, by the way, folks, this is what our show has become. We're discussing competing garlic festivals. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But they, uh, it was a few years ago before the shooting. And apparently they started one out there and and Gilroy got kind of pissy about it because they're actually the they don't grow a lot of garlic around here anymore they still grow it but it's not a lot mm -hmm. 
Um, they process it, but they don't grow a lot. Yeah. A lot of it comes from the Fresno area. Hmm. And they started having a festival down there, and I think people got their noses bent, and then COVID hit. Then they came back, I think, last year with a drive through type program. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a, you know, it wasn't as great as it was. Right. People supported it, but whatever. And we were all geared up because our high school band, we're, we're all ready to go. Right. Big fundraiser for us. Yeah. And uh, the year of the shooting, my, our, band lead, our band director was actually there, and a couple of the kids were there when it happened. And it was literally two booths down they were ducking and covering wow and uh one of the two of the teachers from the middle school here are the two teachers that were in all the pictures on the news and everything of the people running away those two people in the front were the two teachers from the middle school here mm -hmm. <clears throat> during that shooting and it you know it hit a lot of people around here pretty pretty hard but you know everybody got through it and whatnot but we we're all ready to Go back and start making you money know, at the you, thing, and then they canceled it yesterday. You, you know, I I, when I was a kid, here we go. When I was a boy, when I was a kid, back when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I mean, there were just as many guns in this country as there are now. No, and it's just the lunatics pulling and, the trigger. Wait a minute, yep. and yet you never heard of these kind of incidents back then. You know, usually guns were something that gangsters used against each other. And you heard about, you know, St. Valentine's Day massacre, things like that. But you didn't hear about just wanton, just random shootings. Yeah. You know, and why, why uh, uh, Jeff, you have your hand up. Yeah, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. there was a bunch of guys who were interested in guns. Mm -hmm. And they used to bring their guns to school. In their pickup trucks. Whatever, they would go on the matter. subway. In New York? In oh. New York. And they, and they took their guns, and they would bring them in, and then I don't know what the hell they did. They must have a place where they used to shoot them or something. It yeah. wasn't a big thing to bring them into shop class and no. fix them. Right. And to fix them. Right. But they also had mental hospitals, too. Yeah, that's yeah, true, too. And now they don't, and you see people talking to the side rail I saw last month, you know, it's like... Yeah, but right still, still, I mean, <clears throat> the way in which guns have become so predominant in this society is a danger. I mean, that you know, uh, and, and that when I went to school, yes, there were just as many guns around, but there weren't people shooting them everywhere. Yeah, Back when the I was guns, in school, it's the people. Back yes. when I was in school in San Francisco, there were kids with guns, but they were called the ROTC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, hmm? it was not unusual to see have a gun rack in the back of your pickup truck and drive into school. The gun rack was in the back of the window, and it was parked in the parking lot, and it was still there when you got out of school and you went home. Now, I didn't see anything like that till I got to Dallas. Not even in Houston did I see that. Yeah, in Houston, Houston, in Houston, in Houston. Well, in Houston, they used to. I remember there was a on Saturday nights. People, you see, they were they were fifty years removed from sidearms, so they could still carry sidearms. Believe yeah. it or not, in Texas, and they would go into a bar, get into a fight, and start shooting up the bar. And I would was often told about uh, by the, our news director, a guy named Richard Dobb, and I said to him, "Boy, I just heard there were a lot of shootings in bars. Why aren't we reporting them?" He says, "Ah, that happens every weekend. That's Houston." Yeah. But that was str strangely unique, even in Texas to Houston. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But in California, you had to display your gun if you were going to carry it. Is that not right, Alan? You're correct, Kevin. Yeah, and, and now you can't do that. Nope. nope. Well, they had a great law in Texas. I loved this one. This was my favorite law of all time. You could not carry a gun in a car unless you were transporting it from one place to another. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That was the way the law read. Kevin. Yeah. Does a car yeah. wash count? If, if, if uh, I'm, so, you have a gun in your car. Yeah, well, I'm and taking you, it home. We well, have a gun in you your car. Well, I'm and, taking it to work. And Alex, you couldn't carry it in the passenger compartment. If you had a, you know, sedan or hard top, you had to carry it in the in the trunk. In the you trunk. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. California's like that now. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be in a locked container, unloaded. Separate from ammo. In the trunk. 
in the trunk or if you don't have a trunk somewhere out in, of the in the trunk forever. along with the dead body right yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah well, about 20 years ago texas tried to join civilization and they asked well that how's asked, that working for you <laughs> Hey, hey, we got an attorney general down here that's fighting it tooth and nail. But uh, uh, they passed a gun law that you you know you had to have uh, a license to carry a gun, a concealed carry license. You had to take so many hours of safety shooting classes. You had to pass a test. Here, two years ago, they did away with all of that. You can conceal carry. You don't need a license. You don't need to have any kind of background check. You don't have any kind of testing. You can go and you can literally walk into any pawn shop and buy a gun with no identification. Hmm. We don't give a shit who you shoot. As but long why, as you but why does the pawn shop have to have identification? Well, they <laughs> used to require you show you identification. You didn't get that. You didn't get I that. Got it. No. Yeah. I just wanted to live it, let it lay there well, on the Well, don't take it seriously. It. Just let it lie there. Yeah. You, know, you said you walked into a pawn. What was the term he used? Walk into a pawn shop uh, without a without a license. And I said, pawn shops didn't have to have Identification. Identification didn't have to have. Forget it. We'll, we'll go on to our next thing here. Did you see where uh, Barack Obama? Who? Barack Obama. You remember him? Uh, he had that series. He had that now. series on Netflix. Remember oh, yeah, him? That's... Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Thursday called for greater regulatory oversight of the country's social media giants, hmm. saying their power to curate the information that people consume has turbocharged political polarization and threatened the pillars of democracy across the globe. Anybody disagree with that? I don't disagree yeah. with it. It's easy to fix. Get a VPN. Okay, now let me let me just let me just throw this out to you. So I'm watching Fox today, and I'm watching uh, the um, uh, outnumbered because I the women there are nothing but women on the show and one guy, and I like to see how far up their dress I can see with the camera. <laughs> okay, uh, because they all wear dresses up to their. You know, as my parent, those, my mother used to call them puppics. We uh, used to call those uh, uh, airplane dresses. Yeah, the but anyway. was up to the cockpit. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, um, and they if they were they were arguing about Barack Obama taking this stance. Now, what would you think they would possibly argue with? I mean, I think we all agree that these uh, uh, social media organizations have caused a great amount of distress in this country and political polarization. I think we'll agree with all of that. Uh, what do you think they were complaining about? Barack Obama. Oh, of course. Barack Obama is trying to censor us. <laughs> all he's saying is he's, you know, the trouble is that when you, you started these companies called social media companies, and they never existed before the modern <clears throat> era, they, they, were created in the vacuum and they opened up and you know Facebook said hey everybody can come on and post whatever and Twitter said hey, you can post whatever and then one thing led to another they became more and more popular more and more popular more and when they hit a certain point the danger started happening because nobody was regulating it least of all them because they didn't realize how big they had gotten you know, it's kind of like one day they say, oh, we're going to put a, uh, uh, you know, one of these uh, federal suits against you for uh, uh, infringement of whatever. And you go, well, why? And then all of a sudden you realize, yeah, I guess I've gotten that big as a company, you know, that I have to watch out for this sort of thing. These people have done nothing to to limit what is what goes across on their, uh, or at least that, that the stuff that goes across is vetted in some way, shape, or form. And now there are foreign countries that are, are, are thinking of passing laws, make, having, making them have to be more responsible for what they do. You know, so. Yeah, but you know, they may have put it into their fine print, but they have no way to control it. Yeah. Uh, you they, know, that's what I think's happened, is they, they can't, it's out of control. He says that tech companies need to be more transparent on how they operate. 
So much of the conversation around disinformation is focused on what people post. The bigger issue is what content these platforms promote. Yeah. yeah, and they'll tell you in the fine print, oh, you're not supposed to do this and you're not supposed to do that. And it's buried in that, that fine print somewhere. Well, because that was <clears> written by, force it. Well, that's because it was written by lawyers who didn't want their client to get sued. Correct. Like, you know. And they can always fall back on that and they'll dig it out somewhere when it yeah. comes to that point. But they, they don't have any way to enforce it. And it's in, probably impossible to enforce. They've got their teams that sit there and look for the keywords and the algorithms and all that other crap. Well, but listen, we, it's this, so it's so yeah. overwhelming. They'd have to have buildings full of teams doing that. Well, crap. this this you know this problem has been kind of solved <clears throat> by this new social media organization called Truth Social, that looks like they're going to just be the biggest hit around. Yeah, like parlor. You, you know who we're talking about, don't you? Trump, isn't that, it? That's Trump's Trump's failed attempt. He, okay. he it's so bad and has so few people joining it and is so uh, hard to get and you know make it come across on your computer that not even Trump posts on it. Yeah. Well, guess who was complaining about some of this stuff yesterday in hearings in Washington? That congresswoman of note, Taylor Green from Georgia, when some of her. Did you see her today with her? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. In Georgia with her. Oh, you probably talked about this earlier. What is it? They're tr they're trying to keep her off of the ballot or something? Or yeah, political amnesia yes. to the max. She uh, every answer she gave was I don't recall. I don't recall. It's I don't like walking around and, the kitchen. And they door. show they could show her a picture recall. with with a dog's dick in her mouth, and she'd say I don't recall. Well, you know? they they ran uh, some video and audio from her uh, a couple of years ago talking uh, about what she wanted to do and how uh, Pelosi should be uh, executed. Well, she, yeah. no, what she, what she said, they, see, they now what you're doing, see, what you're doing yeah. is one thing she complains that gets done to her is you're paraphrasing what she said. What she said, and I heard it today, what she really wrote was that uh, um, uh, Pelosi was uh, uh, committing treason. Yes, and that the 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 uh, what do you call it? The penalty for treason is death. Okay, but you know she wasn't saying let's kill Pelosi. She was just saying that she thinks that she's you know <clears throat> a, tra yeah. a traitor. Well, you know? we know what she meant. Well, no, it, it, she says anything she thinks will get her money for. for mm -hmm. You know, she get, makes a lot of money. She <clears throat> makes a fortune off of this crap because all these all these little toadies. Who believe that she's just the, telling the truth, man? This woman's speaking out and putting Biden in his place and Pelosi in her place. They're all sending her money, and she's got something that's a lot, several million dollars in just contributions. And every time she opens her mouth, she gets another bunch of contributions. That's what it's well, all about. It's that. not about belief or what she really believes in. She, well, maybe she, we should be doing that with Gabnet. I could use a couple of million dollars. Well, the more, yeah, but you'll but have Gabnet's to. That's not yours, so it would go to Alex. Well, the starting place for that is you have to believe that the the election was stolen. Can you start with that? Can you make a case for that? No. I can start with, and he rushed in and tried to overthrow the government of the United States. Send money so we can get this word out. You know, I was told once by somebody, uh, uh, I think it was here at WABC here in New York, that if I wanted to get a job there, uh, they asked me where I stood politically, and I said, well, I'm to the left. And they said, well, our program director won't have anything to do with that. But if you can go to the right, you, you know, we know your reputation, we'll give you a job. And I said, no thanks. You know, I have to go home at night and I have to sleep. And I have to go home and the next morning look at myself in the mirror. And if I had to do that, and I don't understand, a lot of these left-wing talk show hosts don't believe a word of what they're saying. You know? They don't. They don't, just don't believe it. Well, in your case, there's some things you just can't get a old mouse to do. Uh, uh, what? There's, yeah, in what? Your, there are some things... 
you can't get an old mouse to do an old lab rat oh an old la i'm a lab rat well we all are me and you how are we lab rats? around when they invented this stuff called discussion programming well uh for honesty <laughs> well i'm not the first one but there no were, were, no you know. but you you know well the reason I hear, i'll tell you I the hear. reason i the reason i went to talk radio was very simple I, I did not like the idea as being a disc jockey that really the only talent being used on my show were the people who recorded the music. You know, I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to be the performer. I didn't want to just have my whole uh, uh, career based on the fact that I play somebody else's work. Disc jockeys are the low end of the uh, food chain. Well, I mean, it's it, 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 and plus, as time went on, at least there was a there was a time when you were a disc jockey and you were asked to be a performer to kind of do funny stuff and bits and things like that. And as time went on, it all became you were reading off cards. That was it, you know. And there was no there was no there was talent no involved in it. You no. know? Yeah. It so cool. I I couldn't do that. So I figured if I went to talk, it's pretty hard when you're doing a talk show for them to tell you how to format it, you know, and how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I just well, I went to talk, and I had all the freedom I wanted. First job I had in radio, there was. Let's no... not get into radio talk. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's first, not first... get into radio oh. talk. Back when I got started, there was no playlist per se. You you played what you wanted to play in the order you wanted to play it, and you and you said what you had to say. You tried to entertain. Oh, excuse me. Was... Hey, did you see sixty minutes last week? Really? What? Which one? Which? About the um, the um, EVOLs. Oh yeah, the flying uh, cars. The flying cars. Remember, I told you last week, the week before, about the uh, the big wigs that came in here into Hollister and bought up that flying car that we've been testing here for the last two or three ten years. Is that it? The Google car. Oh, that was the one. Oh, oh, wow. oh is that the yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. They came in here and uh, brought fourteen billion dollars worth of cash. And it, bought the thing and left. I don't think we'll ever have a flying car. Oh, watch. It's there. They the, bought oh, it. Oh, they yeah. bought it. How are you going to keep people from crashing into it? <clears throat> well, that's the whole thing. Did you watch that segment? Yeah. No. Yeah, go back and watch it. it it's not going to be where everybody gets it. They're going to they're gonna have terminals and little... It's going to be like an Uber car. In you other words, it's going to... It's on your app. And you get a ride down to the terminal, and you go to another terminal, and then they take you the rest of the way in the car, kind of thing. Oh, okay. But that whisk, that whisk was the one that they developed right here. Wow. They gotta watch Is that it. the one that George Jackson uses? Uh, pretty much. They don't have a pilot at all in the thing. Well, I really. think it would probably have to be pilotless. I saw them testing it out here be all the time. It would have to be pilotless because you don't want irresponsible people at the wheel of that kind of thing. Right. And the computers okay. make less mistakes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, eventually, cars won't have, you won't drive It was cars. a big deal down here, because my wife called me, and she works down at the airport, and she goes, holy shit, there's like 10 black sedans down here, and she thought that the president was coming into town, and our airport here is like a dump. Mm -hmm. It's all these broken down buildings and shit. And these Learjets pulled in, and there was like 10 of these SUVs all blacked out. And they came onto the runway, and they popped in there, and she got video of it. And they all shot across the airport and went across the other side. Wow. They came back, and uh, she ended up talking to one of the guys over there and, and at the other end of the airport. And one of the guys that were doing the maintenance, and they said, yeah, this company came in and bought the... the uh, the EVOL for fourteen billion dollars, and then that that particular article. Fourteen billion dollars. Wow. Fourteen billion with a B. That's a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. And it was Boeing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Over, over near my work, <clears throat> they have they and have five out of ten companies. The one that was supporting it. What, what, what were you saying, Brian? Sorry. Uh, they have. Uh, over at my work, they have about ten companies. That do the the self drive, you know, the self driving autonomous uh, autonomous car driving. And it's like a nonstop. I look out the window when I was in Building One. And you could just see there's one company called Apollo, and then there's another one. And Google had theirs, and I used to take pictures all the time because it's just crazy how many 
I mean, even the the car stuff is going. On. That's the next thing that they're putting in down here is they want they're trying to push in this Strata Verde, which is a proving ground, mm-hmm. and everybody's fighting it because they think it's going to be a housing project, but it's going to be a <clears throat> a literal proving ground, and the closest one uh, apparently is in Spain, and they want to bring it here to test all these cars. It's like an eight mile track, um, a research center, and all this shit, and People are fighting it. I'm saying, bring that damn thing here, man. It's good money. What do you think about the driverless truck? <clears throat> driverless truck, I don't know. I don't think that's happening yet. It's it's there, but it's still a long ways to go. Yeah. You've but, heard me talk about that. But if they were able to perfect it where there were very few accidents as a result of it, do you think it would be practical? Because you, you wouldn't have to worry about For fatigue. For certain things, I still can't see it hauling hazardous materials. And I've been in that business, oh, and that. I yeah. can't see it. All in hazardous material, toilet paper, it rocks. Not not even rocks. I mean, you're talking about eighty thousand pounds of shit going down the highway, and having to stop. Mm-hmm. They can't stop the ones. Look at the one up in San Francisco that got pulled over by a cop and then took off. Yeah. Oh really? Oh yeah, I yeah. saw that. Yeah. You stopped yeah. the damn thing. Yeah. You can't stop it. It, no. it got pulled over by a cop, and then the cop walked up to it and it <laughs> took off again. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's a What's he going to do? Start shooting it? <laughs> uh, here in Texas, they would. Yeah, it's a way to go. It's a, it's got a ways to go. It might happen, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem. It's a lot. Of, it's a he lot of steel and a lot of shit fuel, in, wasn't in he? It to for it to happen. I mean, what were you saying, uh, Alan? Wasn't he towing fuel? Who's that? The tanker that took off from the cop. No, no, no. It was just a. Car. No, it's a little car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, it was just a little car. It was like yeah. one of those little smart cars. I wonder if the, whoever was operating it saw the cop coming and just said, oh, the hell with it. I'm going. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there was something like that. There was some kind of a, after it stopped and then took off again, it was supposed to be, you know, controlled by someone in a, in a computer. Who do they give the ticket to? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. They asked the dummy in the front seat to get out and do a field sobriety test? Yeah, no. right. There's nobody in there. It was why, it, why was why was it getting pulled over? I can't remember. I think it it was a it was a violation. It was a, a traffic Francisco, violation. I think in the city streets. Yeah. I thought it was a, a expired uh, license plate or a sticker or something. What I no, I think, I think it was. I think remember. he. I think he didn't do a full stop or yeah, cross over the line or something yeah, stupid. I, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> what happened? I wonder what happened when they found out it was a driverless car. I mean, I, well, I don't. He knew it was when he pulled oh, it over. Oh, he, he knew, knew it. it. How do you pull yeah. over a car that's driverless? It doesn't know. Well, it's I supposed get... to. It's supposed to recognize it, and that's my point. Is it supposed to recognize that it's a oh. driverless? Okay. You know, he knew it was a driverless car, and the car is supposed to know it's getting pulled over. Yet yeah. it pulled over and then took off. And well, then the second time it pulled over, it's supposed to be taken over by someone in a in a, on a computer in an office somewhere. And it's supposed to lock it down and stop, but it didn't. <laughs> I mean, if, if you have driverless, I mean, what's the point of having driverless, you know, semis going across the U.S.? They're not going to lower prices and say, oh, well, well I, now we I, don't need employees, so we're going to lower all the prices. The prices oh, aren't going down. Well, how it's many accidents? Popular. How many accidents in in trucks do we have every year because of fatigue? Yeah, you know, that's one point, but you still got to have somebody in it if you're going to try and get around that. You know, you could have a guy in it sitting there. Yeah. You know, but but I mean, they have cruise control. Did you see Canada? the lady? Wait, do you see There's the cruise I, control. tonight? Tonight yeah, on the news. Tonight on the oh, we lost Jack because he's got to go do a show. Uh, uh, they had a thing tonight on the news where uh, in I think it's like Sweden or someplace like that they've come up with a whole new system of the stuff they embed in the roads, mm-hmm. and then if you drive over it and you're like an el- electric car. It will charge your battery. Oh wow. wow! I'm going there. I'm going there next week. I'll check it out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going. And that's there. originally how they were going to run these these other cars too. Is there was going to be a rail of some sort in the in the road, and your the car mag. would follow that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like but the, this is lab, literally. Like I, I don't train. know. Uh, no, it's not a maglev. It's not a no. It's literally a. It charges your batteries in the car. Yeah. The car and that's has to how be. They were, 
planning before they had the sensors and stuff that they were going to run cars down the road. They were going to put something in the road that would guide your car down the road, but then they came up right. with the sensors and all that shit. Well, this, yeah, my, my Cadillac, my CT6 has the lane, the lane adjustment. So it can read the lane and it's on like probably 95% of the roads, you know, like these small roads, they don't have that, but definitely like on the freeway and the other major roads, they have that. So if, if I start drifting, it'll, it'll pull me that way. Unless I have my turn signal on, then it'll let me go through. You know where all those started, Brian? Hmm. Those started in trucks. We've had those in trucks hmm. for years. Really? We had them in our trucks, I, I'll tell you, at least 10 years ago. Ah. And what happens is you drive along the road and the seats vibrate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. start drifting, all of a sudden it goes, <laughs> you're yeah. going, oh, shit, I'm going to get yeah. back over here. They don't, well, the wheel didn't turn, but the seat would vibrate. Oh, okay. Yeah, my seat vibrates. I, 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 I wonder how many people. I, I, it on purpose. I wonder how many. Pe I wonder how many people just pulled over. To, I wonder how many people pulled over to the side of the road just to get a cheap thrill. Oh yeah, you know? people used to ride the lane and go. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you know when it's a long drive sometimes, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I. Uh, yeah, or your radio would short out. It would make a bzzz over the radio or something like that. That was the old days when that stuff was just coming out. Well, That's well what they also, were. also we're talking about this at a time when it's hard to get truck drivers yeah yeah that's, what, well, that's so, what they're trying to do is make up for that but i can't see you know the stuff that i used to haul hydrogen chloride and, no. and you know corrosives and all this explosive stuff going down the road with no driver in it hell yeah. no especially, i mean we have to pull over every hundred miles and check our tires yeah, yeah. especially like california california so we have two buildings we have two buildings. What? No, nine o'clock. Bye. So we have two buildings, and we wanted to bring some uh, um, sodium hydroxide, and just across, you know, across from one building to the next, Bye. and and yeah, there's a whole, you know, the whole hazardous material just going from across the street. It's like crazy. Yep. I used to permit all that stuff. Oh boy! I, at times when I look at Adrian, I go, "Gee, I wish I had a kid." And then other times when I look at Adrian, I go, "I'm glad I never did." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I never say that. Like, huh? Mm -hmm. I never say it, that. I never say it either. You know, but I'm saying that you know. I when, never say that to her face. <laughs> I mean, there are times like that where you probably go, "Come on, leave me alone for a minute. Let me have a moment." Oh my god! I try to take a nap sometimes, and she'll come walking out, and all of a sudden, you know, you feel something around you, and you open your eyes, and she's right there. Oh my god! Because oh, I, 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 re I recently have had these. Uh, lately, been feeling bad about the fact that I never had any kids. You know, uh, it's a little late in the life to suddenly feel re uh, regretful about that, but you know what the hell but uh i you know and then then i think about you know yeah i would have liked to have kids you're very lucky you're very lucky that this time in your life you yeah, know yeah because i was partying pretty hard for a while well but it, it, she is the product <laughs> she's the product Brian, of what you did i got another one going to prom tomorrow night so. oh my god <laughs> see 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 <clears throat> i'm good i'm shining up the shotgun yeah. Well, Marjorie never had any kids. I never had any kids. We're two of the most selfish people you've ever met in your lives because we never had to make an accommodation for another person. So, you know, what have you. Hey, listen, that's it for this week. I had fun this week, oddly enough, doing this show. I've been feeling pretty good about it. Uh, and uh, I, um, I want to thank Charlie for being here and reminding us of how many people have died as a result of COVID. They're still dying, folks. Let that be a lesson. Going for a million. It's going cool. for a million. Come on, you Republicans out there. Don't wear those masks. Breathe on each other. Spit on each other's food. Have a good time. And don't, Shoot by the way, don't, don't, don't get vaccine either, you know, because it's got that chip in it. Right? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you. Is coming. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Always appreciate you being here. Alan, thanks to you as well. Uh, Brian, I guess you're gone next week. Uh, next week? No, I'm here next week. I'm here next week. Oh, okay. And, and uh, you'll probably then call us. Week. You'll probably call us from foreign countries, right? I'm, I'm gonna try. Okay. Sure. And of course, uh, 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 Kevin, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here tonight as well. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. 
And then I will also push the button to turn my camera on and get rid of you guys. There we go. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight and uh, for the week. We'll see you again on Monday uh, right here uh, uh, at 4 o'clock on Facebook, okay, for the uh, pop-up. And then again right here on, uh, on uh, uh, Wednesday at uh, 1030 p.m. Eastern Time for the ramble on, well, YouTube, among other things. In the meantime, uh, just I want to say to all of you, have a nice weekend. And, uh, um, oh, let's see here. We'll see you then next week. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you're here, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.